in the state of Tennessee. Tennessee and Vanderbilt, just a huge rivalry between these two national powerhouses. These two teams basically do not like each other, Justin. It's a great rivalry, one of the best ones in the SEC. The key tonight for Vanderbilt, I think, will be turning this into a half-court game, not letting Tennessee get into their full-court run-and-gun basketball. And also, a little thing, Vanderbilt has not been a really good free-throw shooting team. Tonight, they need to shoot above 75 percent. Most people think when they talk about Tennessee, it's just talent, talent, and talent. But there's a little bit more than that, that it goes into winning a national title or winning an SEC title. It's the stuff on the court between the players that get it done. The date was January 17th, and proud Tennessee had just been destroyed by Georgia in the worst loss in Lady Vol SEC history. It was the team's third setback of the young season to a top 10 opponent, and questions were being asked if the program that had won four national championships and five conference titles in the 90s was slipping. Uh, nothing to take anything from Georgia. Georgia came out there and they executed and they played great basketball and they just kicked our butts. And, you know, we realized that, I guess, you know, we can't get our butts kicked. But then we came back and we, we set off of that and, you know, that's been our you know, push this season. You know, we know that we're a better team than we came out that night. And we've had to prove a lot of things. So after that game, a lot of people doubted us. And I think even the coaching staff started doubting us a little bit. We had a meeting with the coaches, and they're like, you know, if you guys aren't going to step up, who are we going to who are we going to step to? You know, who who can we look for? And I think at that point, we all kind of took it. Me, Samika, and Ace, you know, kind of took it upon ourselves that this team needs us. Since that ordeal down in Athens, the Lady Vols have ripped off 13 straight wins, including victories over top 10 opponents, NC State and LSU, and a road victory against top-ranked UConn. Anytime you lose a great player, you know, not only did we lose Shamiqua, we lost, our, you know, our best point guard, too, Kelly Jolly. But um, I think anytime you come after the two greatest players in the program, you know, you got to find a way to pull the team through. I think one thing we miss is from Kelly Jolly, that consistent leadership and, um, I've done a poor job, and a few of our teammates, you know, down the line has done a poor job of uh, consistency. So we're still searching for that, and we're trying to, in the postseason, I, I know how important it is to try to stress it to our underclassmen that postseason means business. This is called surviving the band. In the beginning, I've been stubborn enough not to step up for my teammates, and people have been looking for me to be the leader, and I didn't step up before. But now, you know, I'm willing to take this team under my wing, and whatever I have to do to help this team win, I'm willing to do. And that's different from what we had the first half of the season. NBA fans will remember this man as Harvey Catchings, the longtime professional basketball player. Tennessee fans will remember him as Tamika Catchings' dad. Not too bad a title when you talk about a player as good as your daughter. Not at all. I tell you, it's really great having an opportunity to come down and see her play, Justin. She struggled a little bit this year. What, what was the difference? I think that uh, part of the difference is the fact that she didn't know how to develop her role. You know, you get so used to having Shamiqua Holtzclaw in the lineup and you're going to Shamiqua back and forth. And now there's a, there's a situation where, you know, Pat wants her to step up and take more of a leadership role. And, and, you know, she's always tried to lead by example. And now she's beginning to understand that she's got to be more vocal and she's got to, you know, get in players' faces when they're not playing right and just go out and continue to work hard to play her game. Harvey, exactly what happened to Tamika after the Georgia game? Uh, her confidence it, it looked like it just rose up and she started playing basketball the way I know you think she's capable of playing. Well, Candy, I'll tell you, one of the things that really um, bothered Tamika was the fact that she felt that she was being outside of the offense a little too often. Right. Uh, I know that there are times of the game where she, you know, like three, four, five minutes she goes without having an opportunity to shoot. And she called me, she said, Dad, I'm really having a problem. I'm struggling with my game. I'm struggling with my role. I'd like for you to come down and spend some time with me. So I dropped everything that I did that I had going on in Chicago, and I came down. And uh, we sit now. I went to a couple of practices. I broke apart her game, and I showed her what she wasn't doing right, what she was doing right. And I told her that she's got to refocus her thought process, and she's got to become more vocal. Wow. I mean, what an advantage for a kid to have a dad that can come down and not actually just talk to you, but show you, take you out on the court and show you how to do it. That's that's a huge advantage. Thanks a lot, Ken. Harvey Catchings, thank you very much. Uh, don't get too nervous tonight. Of course, when I say struggle about uh, Tamika Catchings, she was the all-conference player. Not too bad. When we come back, Tennessee and Vanderbilt on SEC TV. 